Well, today we're going to do a little bit differently than we have in times past. Normally, we post my video devos on Mondays and uh, the Bible studies that Ben and I do on Thursdays. But in lieu of a video devo on Monday, we're posting something on Sunday. Why? Because uh, it is Resurrection Sunday, at least when this video first posts. And so Ben and I did a study on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. What more important study could ever be done than to study the raising of the Lord Jesus? So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, we enjoy doing it and uh, believe it'll be a blessing to your life. Well, we are talking about the greatest subject in the world today, aren't we? Yes, we are. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, the resurrection. He's alive. Yeah, he is. He is risen. Mm. Indeed. Indeed. So we're going to talk about five points that relate to the resurrection that people need to know and grasp okay. and uh, lay hold of. Yep. So uh, it's not that there aren't some other points that could be mentioned, mm. but these are what I consider some pretty major points. The major, okay. So we're going to look at Luke 24 as it describes the resurrection. All four Gospels yeah. talk about the resurrection of Jesus. They don't dare leave that out. Now, there are certain <laughs> miracles that some will tell and others will leave out, yeah. but they all talk about the cross and they all talk about the resurrection. Yeah. Now, uh, in Luke 24, it talks about it being the first day of the week. Mm. early in the morning and women came to the tomb bringing spices well mm. that was the custom of the jews to okay. uh, mix spices on the body of the dead person mm. it was a sign of respect you're not going to stop a dead corpse from stinking okay but nevertheless uh, you show respect by putting a nice smelling spice uh, yeah. on the body yeah so this is in verse 2, Luke 24. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Mm. Well, on the way there, another of the Gospels says they started thinking, what are we going to do about this stone? What are we going to do? <laughs> but uh, they needn't worry. The stone wasn't there. It wasn't in place anyway. Mm. And it says they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. So the tomb is empty. Still mm. empty today, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the tomb is still empty. You know, number one, they couldn't, uh, you know, um, they, they, they shouldn't have been, you know, worried. The guys were there. They have to beg them. Can you just open up the, you know, <laughs> the tomb, shift well, it, let's go in. There were and supposed to be Roman soldiers there. Okay. But I don't know how cooperative they would have been. In fact, yeah. it was their job to make sure that tomb stayed sealed, locked, and a stone in place. An so they would not have been very helpful. I they weren't God. there, though, by this point. Yeah. Uh, they go in. It says, verse 3, they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were greatly perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Interesting how angels are sometimes referred to as men. Uh, yeah. They are male in appearance, mm. but they're not human beings. They mm. are angels. Angels. So suddenly angels show up and uh, the women do what everybody does when mm. they see angels. They get scared. <laughs> That's just what you do. Yeah. Uh, they bow their faces to the earth. They said, why do you, s the angel said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? Well, that's a great uh, expression. It's a great word. Mm. Why are you looking for someone who's alive <laughs> among where dead people are supposed to be? Right. And then they say, he's not here, but is risen. Uh, just as he spoke to you, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and rise the third day. They mm -hmm. remembered. And, uh, and then it lists the, the names of the women. And it goes from there. Now, we're mm -hmm. going to stop and get to these five points. And it'll kind of cover pretty much the basics of the, the resurrection. Okay. Uh, point number one mm. that I wanted to make is that Jesus predicted... His death and resurrection yeah, yeah. numerous times before it ever happened. Mm. You know, the women come into the tomb and they don't see the body of Jesus. And it says they were greatly perplexed about this. Mm. But it wasn't just the women. They go and tell the disciples and they can't believe it. And they don't mm. know what to think about it. Uh, everybody's confused. Everybody's in in doubt. Uh, nobody really understands it. And yet Jesus had said it at least Three yeah. times, yeah. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to rise from the dead mm -hmm. the third day. Yeah. Nobody seemed to get that. Mm. And in fact, the angel said what we just read. Don't you remember what he said to you? Yeah. It's like somehow that hadn't made a very great impression on them. 
you yeah. would have thought somebody would have said, well, you know, he told us he was going to rise and his mm. body's not here. You know what? I think I think he's risen. Yeah. It didn't seem to occur until those angels showed up. What do you think? Yeah, the angels reminding us, you know, what Jesus said, takes me back like, we are there there when Jesus was, you know, teaching. Yeah. Um, and saying all these things, where they just getting the information, you know, <laughs> in heaven. So, but it's really interesting, you know, that the angels keep record of what we say up to what Jesus was preaching. And they, you know, when the time comes, they will just bring it to your understanding or your memory. That is what Holy Spirit is doing yeah. for us today. He's like, he's going to be teaching us what he's going to be getting from the Father <laughs> well, you, and reminding us, you know, even what we have studied. No. You made a point that I don't think I've ever heard any preacher refer to, <laughs> nor have I ever referred to it. What is it? The point is, angels have good memories. <laughs> when they hear something, they don't forget it, especially don't when forget. it comes from the mouth of Jesus. Yeah. And they're like, don't you remember? Well, you remember, remember very we remember well, but don't it. you remember? <laughs> So, Losing your memory, remember things, yeah. I tell you. <laughs> so the point is, Jesus was not surprised. Mm -hmm. He had predicted it. He knew he came to this earth to die. How yeah. did he know it? Well, there's two possible ways he could have known it. One would be the Father could have just told him by the Holy Spirit, Son, mm -hmm. here's what's ahead. Yeah. Actually, there's three. Then you remember on the Mount of Transfiguration where yeah. Moses and Elijah appeared to him? And the Bible says they spoke about his his coming departure. Mm -hmm. So they were talking about his death and mm -hmm. no doubt his resurrection. And then, yeah. of course, the scriptures have numerous prophecies about the death of the Messiah and the resurrection of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm sure he read it in the scriptures. He heard about Moses, heard it from Moses and Elijah yeah. talking, and no doubt he heard it from the Father. So Jesus yeah. knew very well, and he said to his disciples at one point, you're my friends, mm -hmm. I, I tell you secrets, I tell you things I wouldn't tell anybody else. Uh, a, 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 a slave, you wouldn't tell things, but mm. I've told you everything. Yeah. So he, he told them. All right, well, let's get to point number two. Mm. Point number two, Jesus' death and resurrection is an essential part of the gospel. If you don't have the death and resurrection of Jesus, you don't have the gospel. Mm. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.8, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, says mm. Paul. And then in 1 Corinthians 15, he says, Brothers, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you. I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins mm. according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. In other words, this is the gospel. Yeah. So this is important. Now, a lot of people would, would hear this and say, well, yeah, we know that, Dennis, uh, the death and the resurrection of Jesus, that's part of the gospel. Yeah. It's amazing how many people don't seem to really get that, or at least they don't follow through with that when they try to witness to people. Mm. I'll never forget reading a pamphlet one time somebody handed me uh, about Christ, and, and, and it was trying to persuade people to give their life to Jesus, mm. which is a good and noble thing to do. But the, the pamphlet went something like this. Do you need a friend? Are you lonely? Are you depressed? Mm -hmm. Jesus will be the best friend you ever had. Yeah. It went along those lines, a little short pamphlet. Mm. And then at the end, it says, now, if you want Jesus to be your friend, pray right. this prayer with me. Jesus Christ, come into my heart and be my friend. Yeah. I mean, that was pretty much it. Yeah. So I'm reading this pamphlet. And it's supposedly an evangelistic pamphlet, right? Yeah. And it's like... There's no cross mentioned. Okay. There's no resurrection mentioned. Mm. It's just like you need a buddy and Jesus will be your buddy. So invite him into your heart so he can be your buddy. Yeah. That's not the gospel. They haven't even begun to witness of Christ. Yeah. Until you have talked about the death and the resurrection of Jesus, it's not the gospel. Mm. One time Billy Graham in his younger years preached a message and it didn't go very well and he didn't feel very anointed. And at the end... A friend came along after it was over and uh, put his arm around Billy and said, mm -hmm. Billy, do you know what was wrong with that sermon? And Billy was honest <laughs> enough to say, and I admire him for that. Mm -hmm. He said, well, no, but I know something was wrong. I, it didn't feel very good. The yeah. man said, you never preached on the cross of Jesus. You never even mentioned it. Mm. And Billy Graham said, I determined from that moment on, I would preach and I would declare the, the cross of Jesus mm. And later he added the resurrection of Jesus in every sermon I preached, whether he preached on the family or the return of Jesus or any other subject. Mm. 
he would always include the, the, the cross and the resurrection. Mm. So the resurrection is powerful. There's a place in Acts where it says, with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Yeah, yeah. When we, it, it doesn't matter who you're trying to win to Christ, whether mm. you're preaching at a pulpit, on a platform yeah. like we've done in Africa, or whether you're just talking to a neighbor, or yeah. whether you're trying to lead your seven-year-old son or daughter to Christ, yeah. You've got to mention the cross and resurrection, don't you? Yeah, we have to mention the cross and the resurrection because that is the ultimate point of salvation. He went to the cross for your sins. Right. Yeah, and, you know, the blood was shed on the cross. And then he died and he was buried. So um, we can't leave him in the burial tomb. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> because he's not there, and we have to let them know that he resurrected yeah. on the you know third day, and uh, at the same time, um, uh, you know that would be like okay uh, when they are thinking about what you preached or what you taught them, they will be like okay this God resurrected. So that is the you know main point. Uh, you know I'm like okay. Um, I have passed my exams because working with you is, you know, for these long years is like over a decade. And no. um, you telling me you have to point to the cross. You have to point to the resurrection. You have to point to Jesus. You know, that is like um, anybody that knows you will know that when you preach and you preach and, you know, the cross is not there. The resurrection is that Jesus, you know, as a whole is not there. You'll be like, mm -hmm, I, I didn't like the sermon today. <laughs> That's right. You know, in America and in every other country in the world, we have laws, right? And if you break the laws, then you can be arrested by the police. <laughs> they'll come and they'll read you your rights. You know, okay. you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held yeah, against that you. that right has to be there. And uh, they'll take you to jail. Mm. You're a criminal. You've broken the law. At least okay, no. they're assuming you are if you get convicted. Hmm. Any preacher or evangelist or Bible teacher or anybody who's trying to win someone to Christ yeah. and doesn't mention the cross and the resurrection, mm -hmm. they're a criminal. They need oh. to be arrested and put in some kind oh. of a jail. Uh, yeah. all right. Are we going too far now? Yeah, all right. I, I'm, I'm exaggerating <laughs> okay. a little bit in terms of uh, okay. that need to be put in a jail. Yeah. But they do, really, They if they can preach a message that they think is evangelistic and they yeah. don't even mention the resurrection mm. or the cross, mm. they really ought to be removed from office. Let them be a plumber or a carpenter or whatever else they want to be, they shouldn't be in the ministry, nor should they even be teaching Sunday school to children. If they can try to, if they in their mind think I'm winning a soul to Christ and they don't even mention that, uh, they're a criminal. Mm -hmm. All right. Point number three, if Jesus is not risen, yeah. our faith is meaningless. Yeah. It's worthless. It's yeah. useless. Mm. The Apostle Paul writing to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15. Now, if Christ is preached, he's been raised from the dead. How do some among you say there is no resurrection from the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Mm. Yes, and we're found false witnesses of God, which is kind of a polite way of saying we're a bunch of liars. If Christ is not risen, what are we doing going around telling you to put your faith in Christ, the one who died for us and rose again? Mm. So what he's saying is, if Christ is not risen, none of this means anything. Mm. Our faith is empty, mm. futile, meaningless, pointless. Christianity becomes a philosophy. And for some people, that's all it is. It's just philosophy. It's like, well... Yeah, it's good to be a Christian, do uh, unto others as you'd have them do unto you, and so forth. Be kind, be loving, be gentle. That's all wonderful. But they don't have any hope of an afterlife. They don't have any hope of heaven. They don't really believe Jesus raised from the dead, nor do they believe they will rise from the mm. dead. It's just like it's a good philosophy to kind of keep us behaving ourselves while yeah. we're in our short little lives. Mm. But the resurrection wasn't part of any philosophical scheme. It was a literal, physical resurrection. And Paul says, if it's not, what are we even doing mm. playing Christians? Mm. What say you? Yeah, you're right. Um, the resurrection of Jesus Christ gave us the, um, the power to declare him today, to teach and preach about him. And we have, you know, um, the conviction, you know, 
uh, that yes, Jesus Christ is, you know, God in the flesh, like he says, because like, you know, Nicodemus was confused at a point, but Jesus had to put him in the right word. Sometimes we can be confused, like, is Jesus really the God he said he is? Mm. So what he did, all the miracles he did showed us like, yes. And then the death and the resurrection shows us, yes, because nobody can do that. Yeah. Only Jesus can, you know, uh, do, be that powerful and do that. Well, you're right. Now, I will say this. There have been numerous resurrections. When I say numerous, scattered here and there. Yeah. Not like thousands or millions <laughs> of resurrections. But there's been a few here and there. Even yeah. in the life of Jesus, he raised Lazarus from yeah. the dead. Yeah. He raised that widow of Nain's son who mm. was in the, <laughs> the casket. They were taking him to be buried. He yeah. raised him from the dead. Yeah. And then there was a little girl, uh, Jairus' daughter, that he raised from the dead. Mm. Uh, and in the Old Testament, there were a few resurrections. Mm. But guess what? None of those people are around today. Yeah. They lived out their lives. They died again. And they died again. <laughs> Jesus is the only resurrection, his life, where he never died again. Yeah. You know, where is Lazarus today? I mm. wish I, if he was around, I'd like to meet him. I'd like yeah. to ask him a few questions. But Lazarus, come and tell us all about it. So what happened? We've got church <laughs> on Sunday and we want to invite you to come take the whole service. Just tell yeah. us the whole story, right? Mm. But of course, uh, he lived out his years. He got yeah. old. He died. Mm. Jesus never has. And when we meet him, he's not going to he's not going to look like an old man. He's mm. not going to look like me. <laughs> he's, no. He is young Jesus and he will always be yeah. young Jesus raised I, never to die again. You're right. Jesus really modeled um, what he preached that there is going to be, you know, resurrection of the children of God when he comes. Yeah. So he showed us like, this is, hey, this is, you know, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. So he resurrected and he's alive. And then he's like letting us know, even if you die, you know, in Christ, though you, you're dead, but you shall live. And uh, so there's going to be another life in, in our lives. You know, hey, we're going to resurrect with a new body, perfect body, beautiful body when Jesus comes. I think that is a, a, a beautiful point. And one thing I wanted to say there is like, Jesus is alive today, and at the same time, that is another thing he showed us, you know, that is coming. That we're going to have everlasting life. We're not going to die again. Right, and uh, I've got to stop here and interject the fact that okay. you've, you're moving on to point number four oh. without even knowing it. So I, I didn't flip, even read it. Flip <laughs> over to the next side, the next page. And, I haven't uh, even looked at this. The, the point is Jesus was physically resurrected. Some Christians even, at least they call themselves Christians. I don't believe okay. they really are. Mm -hmm. But they will say, well, I believe Jesus was raised in spirit. Yeah. Meaning not physically. His body, once you're dead, you're dead. But mm -hmm. in spirit, he resurrected. Mm -hmm. But in uh, Luke chapter 24, uh, Jesus appears to the disciples and says, peace to you. The Bible says they were terrified and mm -hmm. frightened. They supposed they'd seen a spirit. Yeah. And he said to them, why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet. It's I myself handle me. In other words, touch me and yeah. see. A spirit doesn't have flesh and bones as you see I have. If, if you, a, a spirit ever appeared to you, mm. uh, you could put your hand right through him. You wouldn't be able, he wouldn't be a, a substance. Yeah. And then he said, uh, as, they, as he showed them his hands and his feet, he says they still didn't believe for joy. Well, <laughs> at least their unbelief was because of joy at this point. Mm. But uh, he said, have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb. Now, you can just imagine mm. how shocked they are. I mean, number one, they're seeing someone they saw died not yeah. long ago, yeah. a few days ago. And now, not only are you seeing him, and not only are you able to dis discern that he has a real body and he's not just a spirit, now he's asking for food. Yeah. So they're, they're looking around. Okay, we've, we've got a little fish nobody ate from our mm. last meal. Here, mm. here's some fish. And, yeah. and we've got a piece of honeycomb. Mm. Uh, if you'd like a little dessert. Yeah. <laughs> if it was today, you might say, would you like some coffee with that honeycomb, right? <laughs> That's how we would do it. But yeah. I don't think they had coffee in those days. A tea. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but anyway, they give it to him. And it says he ate it in their presence. Mm. He ate it in their presence. What was he That's doing? Was one. he just so hungry he had to have food? No, he could mm. see they're still thinking he's a spirit. Yeah. He's and not, spirits don't eat don't fish eat. and honey. Mm. So he's like, can you give they're me some food? Spirits. <laughs> and he's chewing it. And they're just like watching, thinking, know. wow, mm. this, this isn't just 
uh, the spirit of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. This is Jesus himself. Mm. Now, here's the important point. The Bible calls Jesus the first fruits mm. of those who have fallen asleep. That's in the first Corinthians 15, 20. Christ is risen from the dead. Paul says he's mm. become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. In other words, we believers, yeah. when we die, He's the first fruits. What does first fruits mm. means? It means he's leading the way. Just yeah. like if you've got an apple tree and you get the very first couple of apples on it, they're saying there's more to come, mm -hmm. but we're the first ones. Mm. Jesus rises from the dead and he's like, yeah, there's a whole lot more to come. In other words, mm. all my people are going to do just like I did. They're going to rise from the dead. That is so good. But he was the first fruits. Mm. Now, he made it plain I'm not just a spirit, I'm a physical person, mm. which is telling us we're gonna have a physical, physical resurrection. Right now, I can reach out and touch you. Hey, and it, my, you're, you're pressing too hard. <laughs> my hand does not go through your, your, my, through your arm. You're yeah, not just went a through spirit. It. <laughs> just joking, just joking. <laughs> um, and when you get to heaven, mm. When you first get there before the resurrection, you will be a spirit being. But when Christ comes back and raises all his people from the dead, yeah. we're going to get a, our body back. It'll be a perfect body this time around. Right. Incapable of sin, incapable of sickness. Mm. So Jesus has led the way. Yes. And he's saying, where I am coming, and where, you and what you there. see with me, it'll be your turn one of these days. Praise God. That's pretty good stuff, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, that is promising. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great promise Jesus made, and uh, um, being God Himself, He's gonna fulfill it, and that is uh, the hope we have in Him. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and the hope of our glory is like Jesus is gonna do exactly what He said He will do. He's gonna give us a, a glorious life, a everlasting life. You know, life with no a campaign, life yeah. with no sickness, life. You know, that is going to be comfortable. You know, um, we, we thank God for that. Yeah, you know, I like to call Jesus the expert mm -hmm. when it comes to things that relate to eternal matters, right, right. to life after death. So many people have opinions about death. What happens when you die? Well, mm. some say that's the end of you. You just cease to exist. Mm. You go in the ground. That's uh -uh. it. Others say, well, you'll get reincarnated. reincarnated. And uh, some people say you'll become an animal. You'll mm. reincarnate as an elephant or you'll mm. reincarnate as a monkey or whatever. Mm -hmm. And others say, no, you'll reincarnate as a human. I mean, there's all kinds of ideas all yeah, over the place. Yeah. But the, the one thing all these people have in common with all their opinions is they've never experienced what's yeah. on the other side. Yeah. They're just guessing. They're mm. just surmising. Mm. Jesus came from heaven, lived among us for a short time, yeah. about 33 years, and then he went back. Yeah. And even after his resurrection, he had definite things to say mm. about life, about eternity, and so forth. We can trust his words, his convictions, his truths. I can't trust anybody else. If somebody says, well, I've been to heaven and I can tell you it's like this or it's like that. Well, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. But I trust Jesus. Yeah. He knew where, whereof he spoke. Mm. And lastly, you're going to like this point a lot. Okay. And my fifth point is this. The proclamation and announcement of Jesus' resurrection was first entrusted to say it women to women <laughs> the message first went to the women and they went and told the rest of the male disciples what do you think about that high five <laughs> boom. boom i know right and um and I in love... case people don't know it you preached entire sermons on this subject oh yeah haven't you? oh yeah i preach it a lot you know um letting the women know that you are part of the whole journey <laughs> yeah and uh um the 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 message of resurrection, um, not just Jesus, Jesus, you know, sending them to go and, you know, let his brothers know about it. Yeah. They saw Jesus. That is, you know, a whole message all up, you know, all by itself. Right. And the angels convinced them, like, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's not here. Yeah. He is risen. Okay. Now, <laughs> um, that is uh, the, the message important very important message given to the women yeah the the message of the resurrection of our messiah and the resurrection is the um the most important part maybe not the is it the most important yeah because uh, if jesus did not resurrect, the resurrection you got nothing you got nothing and um 
that message was given to the women to go and tell. And Jesus showed up like, here I am. Yeah. And he's like, give them the ultimate calling and the ultimate sending go. Now, we could ask this question. Why did the women get there first? Why were they the ones to get the message? Because they got up early in the morning and, and headed out. Some of the men slept that's in us. late. That's us. But that's how <laughs> women are, right? Uh, you start a church in most places, you'll have about 80% yeah. women we'll to start up. with. Uh, eventually, exactly. if the men see it's successful, they'll start coming. Mm -hmm. But they'll wait a while. But the mm -hmm. women, they're like, we're all in. Yeah. Uh, and, and uh, you know, some people, they just think a woman should never say anything about Jesus, never teach about Jesus, never talk about Jesus. Just leave out that to us men. Mm -hmm. Well, that's absurd. Preach uh, it, God, God Preach it. said, I'll pour out my spirit on my men servants and my maid servants, mm. uh, on your sons and your daughters. And women can be anointed. Women can share the gospel. Mm. Women can talk about Jesus. And these women were given a commission. They yeah. showed up early and Jesus rewarded them. Praise uh, God. Giving the angels. And then later he, he appears to Mary Magdalene and, and uh, she sees him and, yeah. and all the rest. Uh, women have a role to play in mm. the proclamation mm. of the death and resurrection of Jesus yeah. Christ. He, he, you know, they got, they got the important message. Now, why would you send, you know, have somebody who has a very important message and you'd be like, shut up <laughs> and say nothing. Don't, we don't want to hear it. Shut we up don't, and sit down. Shut up and sit down. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to have anything to do with it. Sit down mm. and uh, hold your message. We got it up in here. I'm like, I have a very important message to convey. No, we don't want to hear it. And uh, so these women got the most important message that the disciples were waiting for, praying yeah. for a long time. And now <laughs> um, Jesus himself says, go and tell my brothers. Yeah. Those brothers are men. And what's kind of sad about, uh, about that is they go and tell them. Uh -huh. Peter and John come running to the tomb. They see it. Mm. Peter still doesn't exactly believe. The Bible says John yeah. did believe. The doubt but was most there. of the disciples still didn't get it, even mm. when the women came and yeah. said, well, you won't believe what we just saw. But I mean, they're angels. They said he's I not know, here. Right? He's risen. Mm. Uh, they still doubt it. And finally, Jesus shows up and he rebukes right. them for their unbelief. Mm. So, uh, and, and I guess the point is uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ is such a wonderful message. Yeah. It's for everybody. Yeah. Boy, girl, man, woman. Everybody has the right and yeah. even the commission to go out and tell people mm. Jesus Christ has come, has lived, has died on the cross for our sins, has yeah. risen again. And if you will put your faith in him, mm. you will live forever. Probably most of you know my wife Benedicta, but few of you know the amazing paths God has led her to bring her to where she is today. Benedicta was orphaned at an early age and lived with an elderly stepmother growing to adolescence. They were so poor, Benedicta had to drop out of school and sell food door to door for them to survive. As a teen, Benedicta got a job as a housemaid, which developed into a nightmare. She was required to cook, clean, wash, take care of the children, and she had to get up at 4 a.m. every day just to get her work started. Worse than that, she was frequently beaten. At around 20, she moved to the huge city of Lagos where she started her own little business. Sometimes she prospered, but at other times she nearly starved and went days at a time without eating. At one point, she became so sick she passed out in her room and nearly died. She found herself outside of her body and she was able to see the splendors of heaven until she was sent back with a command to share her story. One day, however, her life changed when an American evangelist came to her community to preach. And of course, that was me. The rest, as they say, is history. Benedicta has shared her life story in a recently published autobiography, and you can get it on Amazon as either an ebook or a paperback. A link to this book on Amazon is in the description.